All right, Bulldogs, we're going to jump now into AAA, sometimes referred to as AAA, and every once in a while referred to as A. But don't do that in a job interview because it's going to make you look silly. And it make you look silly anyway, just like just now. Uh, well, we are looking at three separate functions overall. We're looking at authentication, authorization, and accounting. And we want to make absolutely sure we're crystal clear on the difference between those first two because every once in a while they get used interchangeably and they're not interchangeable. Authentication, we're talking about who can come into the network in the first place. And then authorization, what can an authenticated user do once they're in? Because as we know, not all users are, uh, not, they may be created equal, but they should not be given equal rights to do whatever they want to in our network. Now accounting, you could go a long time in your career without using accounting. Just going to be blunt with you, but a lot of larger companies use it. And what it does, it tracks network resource usage. Because if you've got one department that's using a lot of a particular resource that costs your company money, and you have another department that uses it very sparingly, you don't want to just split the difference and say, well, we'll just bill each, you know, each department equally. Because the one department that uses it a lot, they're going to be happy about that, but the department that hardly uses it at all and gets a big bill, it's like, hey, you know, what the heck is this? So while we are going to really focus on authentication and authorization in this course, I am going to show you a little bit of accounting just to get you familiar with it and you know what's going on there. But that first A, you know, for authentication, we've been doing this really since almost the very beginning of your network studies. It's simply the process of deciding if a given user should be allowed to come in in the first place, whether that be uh, on your network or a given network service. And as a CCNA, you've already configured authentication uh, a couple of different ways. You put it directly on the VTY lines. Uh, we know that's not the best way to do it because it's a one-size-fits-all password. You're asking for trouble. You also know you can put that on the console line. You can put an auxiliary line password. Um, you know, and also, we've got that local database that we created of usernames and passwords, and we could put privilege levels in there if we want to. So we've already configured that, and while some are more secure than others, some are a little more useful to us than others, uh, those authentication processes are still kind of limited. Now, we can also use one of two security protocols for authentication, TACX Plus and RADIUS. Uh, I'm going to list quite a few differences here for you between the two because we know, frankly, on any exam when you've got two protocols that pretty much do the same thing, but there are a lot of other differences between them. You need to know those differences. Uh, TACX is, excuse me, TACX Plus is Cisco proprietary and it's TCP based where RADIUS is an open standard UDP based protocol, which was actually originally developed by the IETF. So, you know, what happened to TACX without the plus? Well, it's the original version of the protocol, and it's very rarely used today. Uh, very rarely. You will actually use the word TACX, I believe, in a couple of commands, but you're actually configuring uh, TACX plus. Like I said, TACX went up the steps with the basketball one day, never saw him again. Now, other differences between the two. TACX plus, it encrypts the entire packet while RADIUS encrypts only the password in the initial client server packet. Pretty big difference there, I'm sure you'll agree with me. Now, this next one doesn't sound like a big deal to us, especially in theory, but RADIUS actually combines the authentication and authorization processes. And you may think, well, hey, you know, that's that sounds good to me. Well, it sounded good to me the first time I heard about it, too. It doesn't sound like a huge deal, but it makes it very difficult to run one without the other, where TACX Plus considers each A to be a separate process. Uh, RADIUS, a couple things it doesn't support. Na uh, the Novell Async Services Interface, NetBIOS Frame Protocol Control, the X25 Pad, the Packet Assembler slash Disassembler, uh, and the Apple Talk Remote Access Protocol. TACX Plus is actually going to support all of those. Now, RADIUS implementations from different vendors may not work together or at all. Uh, RADIUS cannot control the authorization of users and router commands, but TACX Plus can. And a couple of port numbers, of course, it never hurts to know these. Uh, we've got RADIUS at UDP port 1812, and then TACX Plus TCP port 49. 
Now I'm going to show you a couple of illustrations here. I'll have to enlarge them so there'll be a slight distortion here for the video, and I apologize for that. But you'll definitely still be seeing exactly what's going on. Because what really happens here with these processes is that our router is kind of acting as a middleman between the, the server and the hopefully authenticating client. Because while we can configure authentication on the router itself, you know, with the username, password combination, uh, that would be a self-contained deployment because we're not using the exterior device. Usually, you are going to be using some kind of exterior device. Now, let me find exactly the drawing here because this is the one I wanted to show you first. Let me enlarge that a little bit because this is kind of what we end up with. You know, here you've got the end user saying, you know, hey, I want to come in. I want to come into the network. Instead of the router making the decision on its own, it's asking, in this case, the TACX Plus server, what should I ask this user for? And then the TACX Plus server in, uh, in response will ask for a username. And then the router is going to do just that. Now the process will continue until you're prompted for a password, something like this. You know, and of course, then the user puts it in, then the router passes that password onto the TACX server and says, well, you know, is, is this what we're looking for? Is this okay? Now, from past studies, with everything we've looked at with local passwords and the VTY line password, that kind of thing, you know, we're used to a simple pass-fail for this password. TACX Plus, though, is not quite that simple because we actually have four possibilities, four replies. And the first two that you see here, they're the two that you would, you would expect. You know, you're either accepting the user or rejecting the user. So, of course, that's exactly what we would expect. But there are two other things, two other options. The TACX Plus server may send a continue message basically saying, hey, that's all nice, but i got to have some more information. Now, the server can also return an error message. And this is very important. This is not the same as a failed authentication. What this means is that there was simply a communications error during the authentication process itself. That's a very important distinction, so I'm going to mention it one more time, and then you're going to see it in play later in this section. But again, on top of the accept, reject, and continue messages, and I'll actually bring those up on the board for you, accept and reject, self-explanatory. Continue just means the server's asking for more information. Error again means there was a communications error during the authentication process. Again, it, it is not a failed authentication. And if you think I'm making a big deal out of that, I am. I know it's unusual. Not for me to make a big deal out of something, the error message. But what I want you to do is just remember that because we're going to see it later in the section. And I would imagine it's going to pop up on your exam as well. So what we're going to do next is go through a little walkthrough on some of the commands. We're going to do that in the next video because uh, when you're working on the command line, you got to kind of get used to the syntax. Uh, it's First off, it's long. Uh, and secondly, the order in which you put things in the command really does affect the way it runs. So we'll do, do that next, and then we'll run some more labs and talk about those other two ways after that. So I'll see you on the next video.